Well, I want to thank ARM for having us here. It's, it's actually kind of exciting to see gene therapy become part of the ARM agenda. You know, it wasn't too long ago that if you said you were doing a gene therapy meeting, I doubt you'd see anywhere near this many people in the room. So it's exciting to see the progress that's been made. Uh, my goal is to talk about uh, what we're up to in a few minutes. So um, let me get into it. We um, are a publicly traded company. It actually went public last year. Uh, so we have the obligatory forward-looking statement. There are risks involved with investing. Make sure you read our documents at the SEC. Um, just to start with, some company highlights of who we are and what we're doing. Uh, this is a company that was a spin out from the University of Florida in 2001, so they've been around for a while working in this space. Uh, our goal is to become a leader in ocular gene therapy. Uh, we have a, quite a track record of progress with over 100 patients treated with our uh, gene therapy products in various phase one, two trials, either by ourselves or with partners. Uh, extensive experience in the entire design of a product. It's not just the vector, it's not just the gene, it's the entire package that has to be optimized for a particular uh, therapeutic application. Uh, a lot of experience uh, from the team that not only within gene therapy but across the various functional areas that you need to be successful. Uh, deep intellectual property across all the component parts for gene therapy. Uh, and one of the things I'll talk about is a platform, a manufacturing platform, that allows us to deliver safe, sustainable, commercial scale vector for, uh, for therapeutic applications. And in July, we announced a partnership with Biogen, which we think is an industry leading uh, uh, collaboration that will help us get to where we need to go with their support. So why ophthalmology? We think the, optim the eye is actually uniquely suited for gene therapy. It's a small, well-contained, isolated um, organ of the, of the body. It's well understood. The cells that you're trying to target are, are clearly understood. There's a huge amount of uh, research that's been going into this. And people fear losing their sight almost as much as premature death. So it's a highly emotional and, and important uh, issue for patients. Uh, there's a huge amount of clinical data out there. And importantly, there are a lot of animal models with the exact same genetic defects. So you can do the testing in terms of the hypothesis in advance of getting into people. The endpoints that you need to study are incredibly clear and well established, and there's an awful lot of data now in um, humans, non-human primates, that demonstrates that this approach is safe and effective. Uh, on the right-hand side, you'll see the kind of impact it can have. This is an achromatopsia patient. These, it's a, a day blindness, and essentially the missing protein is a switch that causes this kind of uh, loss of vision during the, during the day. And you can see on the, the eye chart on the bottom, that even under sort of best correction, they can barely see, and without correction in bright daylight, they really are, have a serious uh, uh, disability. Uh, I'm gonna make an apology immediately to all the scientists in the room because they probably know this much better than I do, but the premise around AEV gene therapy is pretty simple. We put the gene of interest in a uh, AEV virus. Uh, it attaches to a receptor on the cell surface. It gets incorporated into the gene. Uh, the virus uncoats and releases the DNA uh, and it forms an episome, and ultimately we'll use the cellular machinery to produce protein. And remember, this is what gene therapy is all about. It's producing the right protein in the right place for an extended, you know, a long period of time, hopefully forever, um, in order to create the therapeutic benefit that you're trying to achieve. And we think AAV has promised because of a number of its characteristics. It's incredibly safe. It's never been shown to um, show any kind of human disease. It's incredibly simple. Uh, to make a product candidate. Uh, it's stable, and I think we heard from the manufacturing panel before that it is highly stable, both in the manufacturing as well as in long-term storage. Uh, it has capacity. Uh, one of the, the knocks on AAV is that it's too small in terms of its packaging capacity, but I think something like 90% of the human genes will fit inside AAV, so there's a huge range of opportunities to use this particular delivery technology for, for a range of diseases. And we've shown that with a single dose, you can get long-term expression. There's uh, evidence in animals over, over 10 years and in humans well over five to seven years. On the bottom of the page here is just a simple cartoon on how we do this. We take out the rep and cap genes, which are the things that cause replication, so it's a non-replicating virus, and replace it with a gene cassette that has the, the gene of interest. As a company, we have a number of shots on goal, and these are all focused on orphan ocular diseases for the most part. Uh, the first one is something called X-linked retinoceses. I'll talk about that further in a minute. But that's in the clinic. It's actually made enough progress that we've earned a, a milestone from our partner Biogen. 
Uh, the next one is a chromatopsia, which is what I showed on the previous slide. That's essentially a protein that is almost like a switch. And if you can replace the protein, you'll be able to give the vision back to these patients. XLRP is a progressive disease, so our goal there with the, by replacing the protein is to stop the progression of the disease, which you know, can cause blindness to these patients by the age of 45. And then a whole range of early um, research projects, again, mostly focused on ocular diseases. So a quick summary of our AGTC collaboration that we signed. It's uh, got three elements to it. We have two clinical stage programs that, that we've licensed to them, the XLRS and XLRP programs. Uh, we also are going to work together on some discovery programs to the point of getting a clinical candidate, and then Biogen will have the option to be able to take those forward on their own. And we've also given them access to our, our manufacturing system so that they can do basic research and other gene therapy programs. Uh, the funding was attractive. Uh, they gave us $124 million up front. As I mentioned, we've already earned one of the milestones, uh, but we can earn as much as a billion dollars in milestones if we're successful across the programs that, we, that we're working on. They're going to pay for most of the R&D funding, and then we'll get royalties uh, depending on the product and the stage of development. You know, that's all well and good, and we certainly appreciate it, but the other thing that's so important about the relationship with Biogen is the other things that they can bring, like late-stage development capabilities, commercial skills, orphan reimbursement, and you know, geographic reach that would be really difficult for someone like us to, to achieve. So I'm just going to talk about one of our programs. Uh, this is our lead program. It's called X-Linked Retinoschisis. And the way I describe it is it's kind of the glue that holds the retina together. So you can see in the center of the, uh, towards the bottom, a, a picture of the retina that is kind of delaminated. And because of this delamination, the vision starts to deteriorate. And if we can replace the protein in an adequate fashion, then we ought to be able to get the retina to come back into its, um, the formation that, it, that we'd like to see. Uh, we have great proof of concept in an animal model with the same genetic defect. We've done all the work in monkeys to make sure that we can uh, deliver you know, adequate doses for a long period of time. And as I mentioned, this is actively enrolling, and we hope to have our full data set and clinical trial completed by the end of next year. And we also think that the orphan ocular space is incredibly attractive. There's something like 260 known genetic defects that can cause vision loss. About 220 of these will fit within the AEV. Um, I'm sorry, 220 have been identified to a specific gene. About 186 are recessive, so it fits well with the therapy. 90% uh, of those will fit inside the AV vector. So there's probably 140, 150 opportunities that are still yet to be tapped just within the eye uh, in terms of therapeutic uh, opportunities. We have a very experienced team. Uh, this is a team that's been in the gene therapy space for a very long period of time. They all have experience in, in pharmaceuticals and biotech industries. Um, they all have experiences across the key functional areas that they're trying to pursue. So we have all the capabilities on the team to make sure that we can deliver the, the uh, products that we're developing. Uh, you heard on, on the manufacturing, it's, it's kind of amazing now that you have a meeting where manufacturing is a, an hour-long panel. I mean, in, in the early days of gene therapy, just talking about whether or not it would work was the important topic. We think we have a unique competitive advantage in our manufacturing process. Uh, it's a HSV helper virus that we use. Uh, we're getting yields um, that give us inc incredible um, volumes of, of product at a purity and potency and um, that's important for these therapies. And we talk a lot about sort of the empties and fulls and we can get at a very high rate of, of full capsids. Uh, we really made a, a significant effort to minimize the time from construct to clinical development. Uh, the product is incredibly well characterized. Uh, we have over 30 assays for some of the products as they go through the manufacturing process before they get released. Uh, we're at commercial scale for all of our eye programs, and we're building out to get reach much higher capacities in order to be able to address systemic diseases. Uh, it's reproducible. We've actually tech transferred this to partners and to CMOs uh, very successfully on multiple occasions. Uh, the product is incredibly flexible. We've done multiple serotypes, multiple genes. Some of these are already in the clinic. And it's been through the FDA and EMEA regulatory reviews on a number of occasions to be approved for human use. And what's not really highlighted on here is we can do this at an incredibly attractive cost of goods. Uh, I mentioned it before, we have a very robust IP portfolio that we've developed both internally and through collaborators in, at universities and the like. Uh, this is IP that covers the full range of what you need to develop a gene therapy product. 
like genes and capsids and regulatory components and delivery and formulation. I mean, all of these things have to be optimized in order to make sure that you have a successful program. And we continue to work with these collaborators and our internal team to uh, build out our IP portfolio going forward. So I'm just going to wrap up where I started. It's a company that's focused on ocular gene therapy. Uh, we have a, a great track record of success. We have terrific exper expertise inside the company to push our programs forward, uh, rich intellectual property base, a uh, broad pipeline of products that we think can be successful uh, for patients, uh, a terrific platform to deliver these safe, sustainable, long expression products to patients, and a key partnership with Biogen that will help us move forward. So with that, I will stop. I'm happy to talk to anybody afterwards if they have any questions.